guys and welcome to my video for exam prep. I'm going to run through five questions. This is for the exam. I'm going to run through it quite quickly. It's fantastic prep for the first exam. All based on the tutorial letter which you will find on my UNISA. So if you finished watching the video and you want to try yourself, which I recommend, go find this tut letter. Okay. First up, question one is they're going to ask you to draw a supply and demand curve. We have been through this, you just have to now do your own one. Remember to put in price and quantity, remember to put a zero. Remember that demand always slopes that way and supply always slopes that way. Put ones in and make an E. Okay, for that you already get marks. Then the demand will either get less, which moves left, or the demand will get more, which moves right. And the supply will either get less or it will get more. In the case of the tut letter, the supply is less. So it moves that way and becomes supply 2. The demand is also left, less, so it moves that way and becomes demand 2. If you take demand 2 and S2, there's the E2. With your equilibrium, remember to make the dotted lines to the P and the Q, as you will get marks for this as well. And then you show them that the price when the quantity was less, because it went from there, Q1, to Q2. And the price went from price 1 to price 2. And Bob's your uncle. You can see that the equilibrium price went up. So price went up, quantity went down. Okay, that's the first one. The next question, they're going to ask you to calculate some formulas. Now, the first thing you must remember that is if they give you Q, let me just get it, I think it's on page 5, page 6, okay. So they give you two formulas. They tell you that QS is equal to minus 20 plus 3P. And they say QD is equal to 100 minus 5P. Okay, they give you the two formulas. Then they ask, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? What is the equilibrium price and quantity? This is all they give you. Okay, so it looks a little bit confusing, but it's actually the easiest three marks of the exam. Because all you say is equilibrium is where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. Okay, that's the graph, there we go, quantity demanded, quantity supplied, equilibrium is where they are equal, they are the same. So all you do is you say the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. Then you put all the P's on one side, so the P minus 5P goes that way and becomes plus 5P, so you'll have 3P plus 5P. And the minus 20 goes that side, so it becomes a positive 20, so it's 120. So that says that 8p equals 120. Now I'm just swapping them around to make it easier. Okay, which means p equals 120 divided by 8. You take this calculator, you say 120 divided by 8 equals, and that gives you 15. Okay, equals 15. So your price equals 15, that you get a mark. Then you just put the price in there. You say at QD um, equals 100 minus 5P. The P we just said is 15. So we said 100 minus 5 times 15, and that equals 100 minus, and then 5 times 15. 75 and that equals 25 so your quantity your equilibrium quantity is equal to 25 okay fantastic easy marks now we are going over to price elasticity of demand we're now going to do question three okay price elasticity of demand with this one just keep your head and everything will be fine Okay, there's two ways they can ask the question. They can give you percentage changes or they can give you numbers. If they give you percentage changes, then, they, then the price elasticity of demand equals the change in percentage of Q over the
the change in percentage of P. Okay, if they give you percentages. If they do not give you percentages, if they give you units, like units went from 3 to 5, and price went from 20 to 16, if they give you units, then you say the price elasticity of demand equals the change in quantity. Now, it's not percentages anymore. It's now a unit. Over the change in price times, and then you just, the P goes that side, the first price and the first quantity. Okay, it's a formula. Don't try to, it's not, just memorize it. Okay, you write the exam soon. Just memorize it. It's not that hard. And then when the exam comes, it's easy. So in the exam, they'll tell you there was an increase in price from 3 Rand to 4 Rand, from 3 Rand to 4 Rand, and the units changed from 1,600 to, no, units, 1,600 to 1,400. Okay, what is the price elasticity of demand? Now we just put that into there. Okay, so the change in quantity, change in quantity, quantity is the units. The change there is 200. It went from 1,600 to 1,400. So you say 1,600 to 1,400. Okay, and six decreased from 1,6 to 1,4. So it went down with 200. Because it went down, it's minus 200, okay? It's a minus because it went down. It's less at the end. If it was more at the end, then it becomes a positive. But it's less, so you have to do minus, minus 200, okay? The change in quantity demanded is minus 200. It was 1,600, it's now 1,400. The change was a minus. Okay, then... The change in price, the price went from 3 Rand to 4 Rand. So is it more or less? It's more, so it's a positive. It went from 3 to 4, so the price changed with 1. Okay. Times, the first price was 3 Rand. And the first quantity was 1,600. And then you put all of this into your calculator. And then your calculator will say... Minus 200 times 3 divided by 1,600 equals minus 0, 0,375 and then that equals 38 if I round it. Okay. Let me double check myself. Okay, they have a positive value. There was a minus four two three positive three. Da, da, da. I suppose. Um, oh, so it is absolute values. Okay, so it's absolute values. There we go. Okay, zero comma three eight. Zero comma three eight. Okay, 0, 0,38, then price elasticity, if it's smaller than 1, it's here, which means it's inelastic, and if it's bigger than 1, it is elastic, and there's perfectly elastic, and there's perfectly inelastic. And here, the suppliers can't set the price because it is perfectly elastic. Okay, inelastic, it is inelastic. When the price is inelastic, it means that people don't like changes in the price. Okay, which means if you want total revenue to go up, the price will have to go down. Let me double check myself before I teach you the wrong thing. Hmm. Okay, so the product is inelastic, therefore the company needs to increase the price of the product. Increase.
decrease the price of the product if they want to increase the total revenue. Oh, inelastic means that it, the quantity doesn't really change. The quantity demand doesn't really change. So inelastic is like cigarettes. So you can increase the price, you can make more money. Okay. Not a fantastic explanation. I could do another video. If you want me to do a long video, just let me know and I can do a very long one. But in short, on this side, price must go up. And on this side, price must go down for total revenue to go up. Okay. It's very much abbreviated, but it's because we're almost writing and I know you don't have that much time. I don't have that much time. Okay, cross elasticity of demand. Okay, cross elasticity of demand. What you need to know there is if your answer is negative, the products are complements. And if the cross elasticity coefficient is positive, the products are substitutes. Okay, complements and substitutes. Those are the two things. Um, they are going to say, let's say, cross elasticity of demand of product A and B is minus 0, 0,25. Then you say it's a minus. So product A and B is complements. Okay. Let me read you the correct answer. Product A and B are complements because the cross elasticity coefficient is negative. Okay, it's negative. That was a minus. It's all, it's on page nine if you want to go through it. Okay, then last but not least, we are going to do one of these tables. I'm going to erase this to make create more space. Okay, this is the unit thing. Okay, so we have total units produced. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have total fixed cost, total variable cost, total cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, average cost.